Looking up begins by showing two male astronauts from China holding a press conference before they head to the Shuguang No. 16 spacecraft. They were Gu Xinghe, who had already traveled into space four times, and also Ma Fei, who was about to embark on a journey into space for the first time. Everyone seemed to appreciate the two astronauts and cheered them on to complete their mission in space and return to Earth safely. However, when the reporters were about to conduct an interview session with the astronauts' families, Ma Fei realized that his family did not come to the press conference. The scene then switches to the past, precisely in September 1990, when Ma Fei was still a child and was dancing with his friends to welcome the torch of the Asian Games, where one of the torch bearers was his father, Ma Haowen, an engineer who was instrumental in the construction of the Dongpei Bridge which became the pride of all Chinese people at that time. Before running across the Dongpei Bridge, Ma Haowen gifted his son a globe made from a football, and then carried Ma Fei proudly. However, suddenly the bridge they proudly made collapsed, and dropped Ma Haowen's reputation. Not only that, he also had to serve his sentence in prison because he was considered negligent in designing the bridge construction, and tarnished the pride of his country with the mistakes he had made. Ma Haowen was then sentenced to seven years in prison. After a year in prison, Ma Haowen was surprised by the visit of his wife, Xin Yu, who wanted to file for divorce because she felt ashamed to be the wife of a failed engineer who caused the bridge to collapse even before it was inaugurated. Ma Haowen couldn't refuse his wife's wish, because he was also thinking about Ma Fei's future and didn't want to make his son suffer. Ma Haowen spent his days in the prison full of misfortune because he was always targeted by the prisoners there. Ma Fei was also often bullied and humiliated because of his father's bad reputation. That night, when he came home, Ma Fei saw his mother making out with a man named Meng, who told Ma Fei that he would bring him and his mother out of the situation that had made them suffer for so long, and promised to send Ma Fei to a favorite school. Seven years later, in 1997, Ma Haowen was finally released from prison and decided to return to his home in Dongpei City. However, the residents there still hate him for what happened a few years ago, and think that he has embarrassed their city, so Ma Haowen is finally expelled from there. Not wanting to make a fuss, he finally left, and visited the house of his ex-wife Xinyu who now lives with Meng. He hopes to meet his son because he misses him so much. But Xinyu tells that Ma Fei is not there, because now he is attending Boryu High School, an exclusive local border that's among the four best in Dongpei. Not long after, Meng got a call from the principal, a man named Yan, who informed him that Ma Fei was threatened with expulsion from school for skipping class and reading a Jin Yang martial arts novel. Hearing this, Xin Yu and Meng rushed to Ma Fei's school, where they saw Principal Yan cursing at Ma Fei in front of all the students there. Xin Yu and Meng then meet Principal Yan in his office, and beg him not to expel Ma Fei from school. However, Principal Yan insisted on expelling him because he thought that a stupid student like Ma Fei would only tarnish the good name of the school. Meanwhile, Ma Haowen who was also there, noticed that one of the photos of the high-achieving students had disappeared from the display on the wall. Ma Haowen then decided to go in to meet Principal Yan, where he then said that Principal Yan only cared about outstanding students, and kicked students only based on their grades. Hearing this, Principal Yan was even more annoyed and would not change his decision, especially after knowing that the one standing in front of him right now was Ma Haowen, an ex-convict who was convicted of humiliating his country. Not just staying silent, Ma Haowen then challenged Principal Yan and said that he would teach Ma Fei until he entered the top 10 at his school. If it finally comes true, Principal Yan must allow Ma Fei to continue his education at Boryu High School until graduation. Principal Yan finally agrees to let Ma Fei stay on for a while, as long as he makes the top 10 in school. Ma Fei was then brought home by his father, where Ma Fei expressed his disappointment to his father, because while in prison, Ma Haowen never gave news about him. He also apologized to his son, and then said that he wanted Ma Fei to focus on his education and not have to worry about him. The next day, he took his son to a place where Ma Haowen intended to find work there. However, after applying for jobs in various places, not a single company was willing to hire Ma Haowen because of his bad reputation in the past. When he was about to go home, Ma Haowen accidentally met a man named Liu who turned out to be a former employee. However, instead of helping Ma Haowen get a job, Liu instead called everyone there to come over and made fun of Ma Haowen in front of them. Ma Fei, annoyed that his father was humiliated like that in public, then pushed Liu, and they rushed out of there. A few days later, Ma Haowen accidentally met Liu who was having a hard time because none of his subordinates understood construction, so they couldn't continue the project they were working on. Knowing this, Ma Haowen also offered to help Liu by saying that he was able to solve the construction problem they were facing in two minutes, and for a fairly cheap fee. Long story short, Ma Haowen was able to complete the job in less than two minutes. 
Seeing this, Liu apologized to him for insulting and belittling him. But Ma Howen didn't mind it, as long as Liu gave him a job that paid him the right amount. As time passed, Ma Howen finally had enough income to make ends meet. One day, a man named Liu Dotto, who used to be Ma Howen's apprentice, appeared to be having trouble with a construction project he was working on. Liu Dotto, knowing that Ma Howen was in need of a permanent job, then hired him for a high fee, and also provided a comfortable place to live for Ma Howen and his son. As they were about to go to sleep, Ma Fei told his father that he was unsure about his top 10 target. However, Ma Fei also didn't want to disappoint his father. Ma Howen then calmed his son down by saying that he just wanted to bully Principal Yan, and he just wanted Ma Fei to try harder in studying, and not to force his will on the child he loves. Ma Howen believes that his son is a smart kid, so he will work hard to help him in his studies. Ma Howen also tries to get his son to learn in a lateral way, not just from school books, and to open his eyes to the world. With his father's encouragement, Ma Fei starts to study hard and is finally in a good rank. Ma Howen also worked harder so that he could buy a computer for his son, so that it would be easier for Ma Fei to study. Not long after, a woman named Tian Xiong came to visit Ma Howen's house. Tian Xiong turned out to be Ma Fei's homeroom teacher who came there to check on Ma Fei's condition. Seeing Ma Fei playing computer games, Tian Xiong looked angry and warned Ma Howen that computer games would make children lazy to study. However, Ma Howen reasoned that studying too much would actually make the children bored and have difficulty understanding the lesson, so Tian Xiong finally understood that. After that, Tian Xiong told Principal Yan that Ma Fei had improved in his studies, and managed to advance five ranks in his class. However, Principal Yan was not at all impressed with Ma Fei's learning progress and instead looked down on the boy even more. The next day, Ma Fei accidentally gets involved in an incident with a group of thugs on his way to school. Ma Howen then helped him, and told him to immediately run to school while he would face the thugs. Because of that incident, Ma Fei was late for school, and was punished by the principal. It didn't stop there, Principal Yan even suspended the status of a permanent employee that was being pursued by Tian Xiong, just because she really cared about Ma Fei. When he finally got home, Ma Fei told his father that Tian Xiong got punished just because she stood up for him. However, Ma Howen didn't say anything, and only showed his battered face from being beaten so badly by the thugs. On the other hand, the neighbors who knew that Ma Howen was the one who had caused the Dongpei Bridge to collapse, then flocked to Ma Howen's house and were about to kick him out of there. But, Ma Howen then got up, and said that he would never give up. The next day, Ma Fei got up early to write a message to his father that he wanted to be like his father who would never give up. After that, Ma Howen went to the police station to submit some of the evidence he had gathered regarding the collapsed Dongpei Bridge, in which Ma Howen was very sure that there were parties who misappropriated construction materials that were not up to standard because Ma Howen had calculated everything. However, none of the police were willing to listen to his explanation, and assumed that Ma Howen was making things up. Annoyed that the police didn't want to hear his explanation, Ma Howen accidentally hurt Ma Fei's feelings when he yelled at Ma Fei for being too excited about the upcoming air show. But Ma Howen immediately realized his mistake and apologized to Ma Fei and promised to invite him to the show. However, Principal Yan did not allow Ma Fei to leave the dormitory just to watch the air show, because Ma Fei would soon be facing an exam. The next day, unexpectedly, Ma Fei was desperate to escape from the dormitory to watch the air show with his father. But when they got there, they ran out of tickets, so Ma Howen then took him to a hill where they could see the air show more clearly. After that, Ma Fei and Ma Howen boarded the bus to go home. In the middle of the trip, Ma Fei got off the bus because he wanted to get hot water at the rest area. However, Ma Fei got on the wrong bus, and was separated by his father. The father and son then looked for each other's whereabouts, but they were caught in a heavy storm which immediately caused flash floods in the area. Ma Howen did not give up so easily, and continued to look for his son. On the other hand, Ma Fei tries to use his wits to make a simple boat so he doesn't sink, until he is finally rescued by the SAR team and reunites with his father. A few days after that incident, the exam results were finally announced. Ma Fei apparently didn't manage to rank in the top 10 and ended up in the 64th position. Even so, Ma Howen still felt proud of his son. Elsewhere, Tian Xiong secretly sneaked into the teacher's room to take Ma Fei's essay, because she felt that it was odd that an essay as good as that would get zero marks. Tian Xiong then gave the essay answer sheet to Ma Howen, and after that, he went to Principal Yan's room to protest. And coincidentally, the teachers were also there. Ma Howen apparently asked them to let Ma Fei read the essay he had written in front of Principal Yan and the teacher council. At first, Principal Yan refused to give permission, 
But apparently, the other teachers agreed to give Mafei a chance to read his essay in front of them. It turns out that Mafei wrote an essay about his dream of becoming an astronaut, and also the difficulties he faced because he was the son of a man who was considered to have embarrassed his country. Even so, Mafei has always felt proud to be his father's son, and believes that every child has the right to achieve their dreams, especially if they have worked hard to make those dreams come true. The teachers who listened to the essay actually appreciated Ma Fei's thoughts contained there and decided to give him a perfect score. Hearing this, Ma Haowen felt even more proud of his son, as well as Xin Yu and Meng who were also very impressed with Ma Fei's essay. After that, suddenly a crazy man entered the school grounds, where Principal Yan then frantically ordered the security officers to chase the man away. However, Ma Haowen stopped him and asked Principal Yan to reveal to everyone who the madman really was. Because Principal Yan was silent, Ma Haowen revealed that the madman was actually Principal Yan's son, who was an outstanding student and was very proud of Principal Yan. But one time, he got bad grades on the exam, so Principal Yan was very angry and didn't want to think of him as his son anymore. Because of that, he became depressed and decided to end his life by jumping off the top of a building. However, he managed to survive and suffered a concussion, which instead caused him to lose his sanity. Hearing this, Principal Yan couldn't hold back his tears. Ma Haowen said that he had great respect for Principal Yan as a teacher, but Ma Haowen also asked Principal Yan to think about his role and responsibilities as a father. Several years later, Ma Fei was finally accepted into the Aviation Academy and began to fulfill his dream of becoming an astronaut. Meanwhile, Ma Haowen finally married Tian Xiong and lived a happy married life. But then, Ma Haowen finally found out that the collapse of the Donpei Bridge was not solely his fault but because his subordinates deliberately knocked down the bridge so that they could gain important positions in the company. Ma Haowen didn't just let it go, and would take legal action to regain his reputation and clear his name. Ma Fei tried to persuade his father not to do that and end it all, because now they were already living a happy life. However, Ma Haowen got even angrier and ended up having a dispute with his own son, to the point of feeling disappointed and not wanting to see Ma Fei again. Turning to the present, Ma Fei finally realized that his father might not be able to forgive him, so he did not attend the press conference. Long story short, Ma Fei and his fellow astronauts finally succeeded in orbiting outer space with their spacecraft, and made all Chinese people proud with their achievements in space missions. However, suddenly there was a problem with their spacecraft, where the communication antenna was damaged after being hit by a meteor. For weeks, Ma Fei was trapped in outer space, until one day, Ma Fei found a message he wrote to his father in which at that time he wanted to be like his father who would never give up. Ma Fei then decided to repair the communication antenna, even though Gu Xing forbid it because it was very dangerous. Unexpectedly, Ma Fei managed to repair the antenna, and managed to reconnect with their colleagues on Earth, so that they were finally able to return home safely to Earth. After that, Ma Haowen approached his son, who has now succeeded in realizing his dream and making everyone proud. Ma Fei then tells his father that he is very proud to be his father's son. The moral that we can learn from this film is, never to underestimate someone regardless of that person's background, because it could be that that person will become successful in the future, while we will only become depressed because we maintain an envious nature.